Welcome to Animating Action with Spark Animation and Arcana Studios. My name is Skylar and I'm the Animation Director at the vibrant Burnaby BC Studio Arcana. Uh, today I'll be showing you a little bit about our latest and greatest production. It's called Heroes of the Golden Masks. Heroes of the Golden Masks is Arcana's biggest budget production to date. I just wanted to share quickly with you guys some of the voice talent that's going to be in the show. This is all recently announced, so I'm free to share this with you. Christopher Plummer, Ron Perlman, Patton Oswald, Byron Mann. They just, I don't know if you guys have seen the show Altered Carbon, but they were, uh, they were on that show on Netflix, which is just awesome. It's my hope that I can dispel some of your fears around animating action scenes. Action scenes used to petrify me as an animator. I would avoid them. I would tell my directors I didn't want to do them. I would prefer to do acting over action because it just, it looked so intimidating. It looked so scary. And I wanted to show you uh, that sometimes it's just pretty simple and you don't need to be afraid and that you probably can do it if you just give it a try. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our characters. We have Lee here, who is our heroine and our bad guy, which is a foot soldier. Can you take a few swings at Lee? Um, the key poses here are done by a senior animator at the studio. So big shout out to Carlos for setting me up with such cool poses. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is uh, play through my viewport a few times uh, and show you my key poses. Really, please, play. Really, please, play. So I do my key poses to camera, and I also just do a, a rough version of them. There's no timing. There's play. nothing. Really, please. Uh, there's no in betweens or breakdowns. It's just my key poses. <clears throat> On my key poses, I also want to work in my face. I don't want to be chasing my face around later on. Please. I kind of want to have that uh, blocked in with really, my main please. poses. Okay, I'll show you my graph editor now. You can clearly see where my key poses are. And from this point on, all I'm going to do is rough in my timing. And in my timing, I'm also leaving space for my moving holds, my overshoots, and that sort of thing. My ease-ins, my ease-outs. Okay, so let's just do Lee for the sake of, uh, for time's sake. This is taking way too long to get here for me, so I'm just going to set a key on frame 112. I'm going to middlemost drag from 98 to 104. And kind of just get a timing that, that feels good to me. Uh, for me, I have a kind of a rule in my head. Most actions happen 6 to 15 frames. So I kind of have that as a rule in my head. See how she's kind of morphing around here during this? I don't really want that. So I'm just going to middlemost drag from here to here. And now I want her to dodge from there to there, but clearly she's dodging way before she can see the swing. So I have to wait. I'm going to middle mouse drag my pose on 122. Well, actually I can just middle, I can just drag this over. So it happens over 10 frames. I'm kind of happy with that. And I'm going to middle mouse drag from this pose to the next one. Hit S. And then she's going to look at him kind of smugly. And then from there to there, I also want to middle mouse drag and set a key. Thank you. 
take a few frames oh, off that. Play. Really, please. Play. Really. Now that I have my timing roughed in for Lee, I want to show you what the graph editor looks like. Uh, in my eyes, when you're doing an action shot, this is kind of what you want. You kind of want to have everything uh, in clearly marked areas of your graph editor. Uh, this makes kind of sliding poses around and maybe doing timing changes just so much easier. And you can customize what's happening a little bit easier. And it's also just a neat workflow. I've roughly timed it to the soldier, so now I'm going to go visit the soldier and do the same thing. All right, so you're kind of you may be wondering about my overshoots and my settles. Um, it's honestly a good. Th it's it's honestly I, I get it. it. They're not in yet. They it, it it's looking a bit stale, but I'm gonna work them in. So here's my end pose at 12. I'm gonna go three frames beyond that. 215. I'm gonna set a key on the COG. Then on my four keys over, four frames over, I'm going to set one on my chest. And then since we only see the shoulder, maybe five or six frames beyond, I will add a overshoot on the shoulder. So I've taken the liberty of adding breakdowns and some overshoot keys on the guard. Uh, this is just to save time. But I would like to show you how to do that on Lee. Play. Really, please. Play. Really, please. He was relatively easy because we don't see a whole lot of him on the camera view. Uh, we have Play. him... Really Just his shoulder, his arm, and his wrist here. Uh, we know that uh, Lee is taking a dodge here. She's dodging a sword swing. But what we don't know is how she's dodging the sword swing. Yeah, she's taking a step to the, to the screen left, but there's no acting involved. There's no, um, we, you know, she's not, maybe she's, Maybe she wants to use her arms to swing herself over. You know, that's what I like to look at. That's how I look at breakdowns, personally. I, I, th I think of breakdowns as, okay, the character's dodging, but how? It does, it does she lead with her head? Does she do her hips push her back first? Does, her do her, does she use her shoulders to, to lead the action? And I kind of equate that in my mind to, to, break, to, to a breakdown. That's how she breaks down the action. So uh, I'm going to get started here and start adding breakdowns to Lee's uh, pose changes. And uh, hopefully um, you guys can take some, some pointers from this. This is a very quick way to do it. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of time here on the podcast slash webinar. So I want to do it quick and uh, quick and dirty.
which is we can always polish more later we can always offset things and add layers of finesse to it but this is to get your actions blocked in and broken down quickly start with the hips If the, if the breakdown going down isn't working for you, well, why don't we try going up? Actually, I think I like going up here. Let's give ourselves another frame. It's just happening a bit too quick. Okay, so hips are started. Let's get that foot planted really quick. All I'm going to do is middle mouse drag it. It's just for my, my brain to recognize you stepping. We don't see it on camera. It'll help me time the hips, actually. So when I was always told to lead the action with the hips, that's something that I was told in animation school and whatnot. Uh, that does not mean the COG. It's taken me a long time to learn that, but the COG should not lead the action. Uh, the hips are what I would like to call them, like the swingers, I guess. These things. So if the hips are going down, maybe you want to have a little bit of compression in her chest. So what I'm going to do is add two breakdowns on the chest. And this is just for the up and down. So hips are actually going, or the COG is traveling up. And the chest is actually traveling down here, gaining a little bit of volume. Let's say she uh, drags that shoulder back. As the chest rotates, the shoulder drags back. Uh, let's try like swinging this arm back to help give her momentum. Yeah, I like that. That's great. So she'll swing that arm back. And get that upper arm controller moving too. Okay, a bit too much swing, but you know what I like to do? I like to push things too far, and then I like to dial them back. Otherwise, you just don't know if you could have pushed it further. I mean, this is a cartoon. We want to be put. We want to be exaggerating. Let's get that wrist showing some some of that weight. And those fingers. Uh, so her arm's feeling a bit stiff. Just gonna take care of that. So the elbow is a little bit more interesting. It needs two breakdowns. Since the shoulder is pulling back so hard, the elbow has to kind of break its. locked position and then it has to react again and swing just a bit too far in the rotations for the elbow so middle mouse drag that over
the wrist is a bit starting to, starting to actually get into my overshoot space here. This is kind of where I plan my overshoot. Maybe I don't need to. You know what? Let's let's undo that. I shouldn't need to do that yet. Okay. Okay, so I got that first dodge kind of figured out. Uh, it's, it's roughed in. Your hips are just a bit twisted, so sort that out. Uh, I'm just pushing the animation really far at the beginning just to get it working. If I, once I get it working, I can dial it back. The hips are leading, but I don't want to delay the chest too far. Lee is, uh, she's not really react, she doesn't have the knowledge to dodge, so I have to give her the knowledge to dodge. So, this guy has raised his sword. She hasn't really reacted to that yet, and that's not really in my posing. So I have to insert a micro pose. See, this is all what I planned for my moving holds and my overshoot. But I need to actually change it up a little bit just to get her to look up at what's happening. She has to be able to read the action. She has to be able to read the attack before she could respond to it. Just gotta find her eyes. Where are the eyes? Hello, eyes. Where are you? So, there's my little pose change I have in there. I can add a little bit of chest to it. A little bit of shoulders. A little bit of hips. Maybe she can relax her hand a little.
Okay. So I got her looking up. Now I'm gonna add a break add a couple of small breakdowns here. I'll start with the face, maybe I'll do a blink. Get those eyes uh, responding. I'm gonna keep her eyes open. Typically if somebody's being attacked, they'll be so full of adrenaline that you, they may not be blinking. Kinda wanna keep the eyes open. Another thing a lot of animators tend to do, which I feel is a mistake, is they do the head, classic head arc, like they just dip the head down. Kind of like that head bob thing. And it's just, it's really, you don't need to, like, let's just favor the other way. She probably should look a little more fierce here. She's looking too worried for me. That's better. All right, now back to breaking this action down, which we had just started. Uh, the shoulders are playing a big role in this move, so I'm gonna get them done fairly quickly. So this one, I'm going to swing forward. I'm just going to test out a few different ideas here. Uh, I like this idea. Let's go with that. Uh, let's drag this other arm back as well. Kind of like she's spreading her arms so they don't get hit. A little bit on the do two breakdowns on the elbow. Get that action snapping in. We tend to open our hands a little bit when we're moving quickly. Uh, it helps us to punch faster. If our hand is not tense and, and um, if our hand is not locked in a fist, it's easy, easier for us to, to move it quickly. Really, please. Play. Really, please. Play. Really, please. Play. Really, please. Lay. Really, please. Lay.
something a little bit lackluster about this dodge still. Trying to figure it out. I think it's the COG. Let's get that moving over quicker. Maybe it's the chest too. It's a little bit delayed. Try to hold this arm back just a little bit longer. Really, please, play. Really, please, play. Really, please, play. Really, please. Okay, so we've broken down most of Lee's poses now. We've decided to use her hips as our main motivating tool. Uh, we added a uh, pose where she looks up at the sword. So she knows it's coming. And we just have this last pose change to do where she kind of looks up at him and smiles. So I'll try to break this down as simply as possible without, I don't know, too many complicated turns. So we'll go four frames in. Gonna add our hip, our COG breakdown. Then look at the hips. They don't do too much here. They kind of shift a little bit. So we can just favor, use a favoring breakdown here. That looks okay to me. Since we are four frames in for the COG, we're going to go five frames in for the chest. No, actually I only went three frames in, so let's go... Ah, oh, we can still do five frames in for the chest. And then the head, more of an acting tool instead of a physicality tool here. I would prefer that she looks at him quick. So let's just have her uh, breakdown be part of her head turn where she favors in her head. Her eyes are going a little crazy. Let's take care of that. Okay, so I like to have her, in general, I like to have my characters look first as part of their breakdown action. Since she's going down here, I feel that the shoulders could, could come up. And then they can also go down. So there's two breakdowns on the shoulders. I 
I like to push things too far and then dial them back. We can kind of give her a smug smile. Play. Really, please. 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 Play. Okay, uh, I like the way she's moving now with my breakdowns. Uh, I want to give you guys a quick look into my graph editor. You can come in here and take a look at what this looks like. Uh, you can clearly see where my poses are, pose changes are, the breakdowns, where they're all kind of inserted and scattered about. So things are still looking pretty calm in my graph editor. I will come in here and start polishing later. I still want to block in my overshoots and moving holds, like here. So how about we move on to overshoots and moving holds? Let's uh, again work with Lee. So we kind of stop pretty abruptly here. I for sure think that momentum would continue. So let's just have that continuing. First thing I want to do is work in the COG. What I like to do sometimes is actually grab that end key for the COG and shift it in a frame. I also kind of want to get this sort of straightened out before I go too far. We need a little bit more Y in there. And she needs to arc her way back up.
Okay, so that's the COG controller. Just working in my overshoots, getting those, uh, putting in the settles. And now I'm going to work in my chest overshoot. Really, please, play. <laughs> Really, please. Play. Really, please. Really, please, play. Really, please. Okay, uh, one last thing I didn't really address. I didn't really break down the hair. One of the things I haven't really gotten into is the secondary animation. Secondary animation is all the things like the hair. Uh, even her pieces of armor would be secondary. The logic behind it is, if you're still blocking in overshoots and moving holds, you kind of need that physicality to, to be able to tell what your secondary is going to do. For this second uh, pose change here, where she goes from this side to this side, I'm not going to custom work in an overshoot like I did here. You can see how my overshoot, you can actually see it here in the graph, or not in the graph editor, but in the timeline. These are all my keys, how I kind of offset each controller and overshot it. The shoulder, the chest, the hips, the COG, even the hands. Uh, this for this pose change just to prove a point I want to show you, you can get a good result Just by doing a very basic uh, Moving hold I'm just going to deselect some of the controls. I don't want settling out uh, Maybe the feet they're locked down The hair, I kind of animated the hair. Alright, so what I'm going to do is 
I'm not even looking in the graph editor for this. I'm just going to set a key. Uh, my pose change ends on frame 142. So I'm going to set a key on 141. I'm going to delete this key, 142. Just to get myself started. Uh, I want to ease into this next move, so I'm going to grab a, go into my next pose change, 152 to 159. I'm going to set a key, and I'm just going to drag this back three or four frames. And then I'll go in the graph editor and polish up those curves. But you can see, it's not the worst result. It's pretty quick really, to get something started. Play. Really, please, lay. Really, please, lay. Okay. Um, lastly, my character is still frozen at the end here, so I'm gonna set a key on Lee. Two frames before. Maybe it's even. Let's just do it right before the end. So the end is 164. End of the pose, or end of the action. So 163 gets a key. 164 goes in the bin. Not quite working. Let's try one more frame. Sort of working, Play. I think. Really, please. Play. Really, please. Play. Really, please. Play. Really, please. And this is nothing to to scoff at. For an hour and a half of work. This is, I know we're working on a movie here, so we want to come in, we want to go into the, the graph editor. We want to start polishing this out and smoothing it, massaging these curves. Really, please. But this is nothing Play. to be, you know, really, it's nothing to spit at. Play. This is okay. My whole method is to get the broad strokes in. If Play. you're finessing, if you're not getting the broad strokes in, and you're, you're finessing about graph editor and all these other things too early on you're you're throwing your day away you're throwing your time away and uh, that's what causes anxiety is when you're 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 working for hours and hours and then your director asks for a change it's like well all that work is out the window so in conclusion this method of animating is great for getting your broad strokes in quickly it's great to show progress to your directors. It's great to figure out timing and your basic posing ideas. So basically what I'm saying is this is just a great way to start animating. Uh, you can build off of this platform and develop your own method, which I believe every animator eventually does. You kind of build your own method. But I invite you to give this a try and maybe restructure your base a little bit. It could help you in the future. And I, I, I honestly hope it does. I hope I was able to dispel some of the mystery around animating an action shot. It's really not all that hard and it can be really rewarding once you get it right. I just want to thank everybody for attending the Spark webinar. It's been awesome hanging out with you. And uh, once again, I'm Skylar from Arcana Studio. Have a great day and stay safe.